Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're here on our Total Wellness Tuesday episode today. Looking forward to sharing with you the five stages of sleep. If you've never heard about them before, you will know them now, and you will understand how much deep sleep you need, how much REM sleep you need, and how to begin getting more of those. I have plenty of links today as well for previous podcasts that are going to help you improve those uh, specific tips. And that is at stephencabral.com forward slash 23. 21. StephenCabral.com forward slash 2321. That will lead you to all of the other podcasts that I'll be chatting about on today's show. Really, really important subject because if you're looking to improve your overall recovery, rejuvenation from you know exercise, or let's put it this way, from life in general, from stress. Hopefully you tuned into yesterday's show on how to decrease a lot of that stress in your life. Uh, but also keep in mind that there are real disease factors, like diagnosed disease factors related to poor sleep. And they are the most common ones that people could deal with. I mean, think about this. Alzheimer's, dementia, heart disease, high blood pressure and stroke, and dysregulated blood sugar, as well as obesity, are all linked to poor sleep. Now, if we think about it, and we kind of go back and we use that as our frame of reference, we then remember like, oh, well, those are all the top leading causes of death. And if we don't die from one of those things, well, we're probably going to live another five to 10 years. I mean, it's remarkable. And it's really about 10 years. Like, it's not just five. A lot of people, and I would say most people listen to this podcast, can really hope to live into their late 80s without doing anything wild. Like, honestly, without doing anything crazy. You just can't get the heart disease, high blood pressure, and type 2 diabetes. Now, here's the thing. The good news is, if you have any one of those three, I'm technically not supposed to say this, but you can reverse all three of those. You really can. I just can't tell you how on this show, but... The truth is you just find the underlying root causes for what caused those in the first place because I know you didn't have heart disease at six years old. And I know you didn't have high blood pressure at eight years old. And I know you probably didn't have type 2 diabetes at seven years old, right? So if, if you didn't have those things, I know that you're able to reverse them. I know that I, I know that you are because your body at one time didn't have them. And you can't blame it on genetics. Listen, almost nobody has worse genetics than I do. If you looked at my genetics, it would be an absolute like disaster. So if you, when you look at genetics on most genetic labs, it's got green, it's got yellow. So green is good. That means no inherited risk for this. Yellow means like, yeah, there's moderate risk. You definitely inherited one factor from one parent, and, but not from the other. And then there's red. You inherited both um, SNPs, which is called single nucleotide polymorphisms. So basically, you got a SNP from both parents. Uh, you're um, homozygous for this. And that means um, you're at a greater risk. Well, literally, mine just looks like caution lights and stop lights. Like that's it. Like it's just yellows and reds all over the place for methylation, for detox factors, for inflammation. It's a mess. Like that's the truth. But the thing is, I was sick with those things from 17 years old. You would even say childhood. I mean, if you knew me for sure, allergies and asthma and insomnia and all sorts of inflammation, right? But let's just say from 17 to 27, an absolute mess, like an, an absolute just sick kid um, just needed to stay inside all day. That's it. So, but here's the thing. It's been a long time since I've been 27 years old and I don't have any of those things anymore. No more diagnosed diseases. And we have to understand again that everything we've been led to believe by conventional medicine is for the most part, very one-sided. Meaning they're presenting to you a side that you can't do anything about your overall health. And you can. You really can. You have to follow what I've literally given out 
that's essentially free now, and that's called the de-stress protocol. It's free inside my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. My book is free because I, I pay for the printing. I just ask that you pay for the shipping. But again, you don't have to purchase the book if you don't want. So, what? Because I, I have over 2,000 podcasts sharing all of the points in it. But you have to understand is this. The de-stress protocol is diet. It's what you put in your mouth. Exercise, how you move your body. It's stress reduction. It's rest, right? So it's toxin removal. It's rest, which we're talking about here today. Emotional balance goes back to stress, childhood trauma, et cetera. Uh, or trauma in life. Then it's scientifically backed supplements. And then it's a success mindset. We're going to talk about the rest factor today. All right. This is really important because there are a lot of people that have genetic predispositions to these things. Well, the good news is, again, you don't have to have them. And if you have them, you can reverse them. You have to improve your sleep. So let me give you just some quick tips right off the bat. All right. So everybody needs to get between seven and nine hours of sleep per night. Don't believe any of the studies that, oh, you can make up sleep during the day. You can meditate for five minutes. And No, don't believe any of that. You need to turn off your brain. You literally need to turn off your body and your brain, your nervous system, and wind down during dark hours. I know some people work overnight. I get it. I totally understand. If you can switch that schedule eventually, it's going to be much more advantageous. If not, listen to my podcast on the night shift, working overnight and creating a new circadian rhythm. You want to be in the dark. You really want to sleep ideally from 9.30 or 10 p.m. at night for about seven to nine hours after that, okay? At least before 11 and, and after about 9 p.m. That's that's the sweet spot. That's when cortisol is going to be the lowest. Um, and again, I, I, don't, I have plenty of podcasts on that. I'm not going to go deep into it right now because again, this is going to be some quick tips and take you through the five stages. You want to make sure that 25% of your sleep is REM sleep. We're going to go over what REM sleep is in just a moment. Then you want to make sure about 10 to 25% of your sleep is deep sleep. Most people are never going to get 25% of their sleep as deep sleep. Most people should shoot for between 10 and 20% of their sleep as deep sleep. So let's do a little math here. If 25% of eight hours, what is that? It's two hours, right? So two hours a night, you want a REM sleep. You want about an hour and a half of deep sleep per night. I've talked about this in another podcast. I'm going to link up deep sleep and I'm going to link up REM sleep and I'm going to link up how to get more of each of those if you're not. How do you know if you're getting those? Okay. You can use a device. There are sheets you can place on your bed. I'm not a fan of those because they contain Wi-Fi. Uh, There are devices like the BioStrap, which I've recommended before. There are devices like the Aura Ring. Uh, I believe the Withings now does it. I believe the... Uh, Fitbit may do it now. The Apple Watch kind of does it. So there are all these things to track your sleep. All right. You just want to make sure that you're not just asleep because remember, you can take a sleeping pill and you cannot remember what went on for the last six to eight hours or so. Right. But here's the thing. Were you getting two hours of REM sleep? Were you getting an hour and a half of deep sleep? Those things matter. And the older you get, the more difficult it is to get those, which is why the mind also can begin to deteriorate, right? And same with the overall health. It's not a, it's not a coincidence. They go, they're hand in hand. They're tied together. But the good news is, again, don't listen to conventional medicine. You can still get an hour and a half of deep sleep when you're older. No doubt about it. You can still get two hours of REM sleep when you're older. There's just, again, you can. So, Let's go into now the five stages of sleep. People give them all sorts of different names. Remember, science and medical science especially, their job is to try to confuse you to the greatest degree possible. I I really believe that. You know, we talk about, even when I was talking about genetics, right? What am I talking about? Well, you know, talking about the human genome and I'm talking about, um, you know, single nucleotide polymorphisms, which are called, we just call them SNPs for short and the CYP, when I'm talking about cytochrome P450 pathways, like it's just, it's too much. It goes over people's heads and it should because we don't need to talk like that. We just don't. So typically when we're talking about sleep stages, we're talking about N1, N2, N3, and then REM sleep, all right? What do those stand for? Just think of it as stage one, stage two, stage three, and then REM, right? You might also see them as uh, N-REM, which is just basically non-REM. So what the what sleep looks at is REM and everything else. Like that's the best way to look at it. But there's even an easier way to look at it, and I'm going to take you through that right now. So the first stage of sleep is a real stage of sleep. That's what I'm counting as basically stage, uh, we can call it stage zero or stage one, whatever you want. It's the waking state to the act of falling asleep. That's important because that's called latency. It's how quickly when your head hits the pillow, 
Do you fall asleep? It used to take me hours up until the age of about, again, 26, 27 years old, where I met my mentor, pulled everything together, got my life together, got my body healthy within a period of about four to six months. So you have to understand is that, again, I was as bad as you get. I had multiple uh, autoimmune diseases, Addison's disease, you name it, all sorts of issues. But I never got my sleep right. And that was one of the reasons why I continued to not be well and I continued to relapse because I didn't get my sleep right. It used to take me hours to fall asleep. I have a mind that is very difficult to turn off, very difficult to turn off. Part of that, yes, is genetics, but again, never believe that genetics are your destiny. My oldest daughter can fall asleep within minutes. My youngest daughter uh, had, does have a mind and neurotransmitter similar to mine. It's difficult, very difficult to turn off cortisol for myself and my youngest daughter. It's very difficult for the two of us to turn off norepinephrine and dopamine. Uh, we, our minds are, are always going, and um, I'm sure I would have, uh, if it was around back then, I'm sure I would have been diagnosed with, with ADHD and, and other issues uh, when I was younger. And so I totally feel for those children and families that, that do have that. Again, I was fortunate not to be medicated for any of those things. I was medicated for plenty of other things, but not those when I was a child. Um, but what did I have to do? I had to learn how to quiet that mind. And, and, I, and I did. And again, I've taught that on previous shows as well. But that's stage one. How quickly do you fall asleep? Now, I fall asleep within 10 to 20 minutes maximum. Like that. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, uh, it's a superpower that I truly believe that I would never harness. But lo and behold, all things are possible, right? So that's stage one, is getting your body into sleep. Like it's so important. And that's setting the environment, all the other things I've talked about. So again, we'll link a lot of these shows up at stephencabral.com forward slash 2321 if you want, want to learn how to sleep better. All the podcasts, by the way, are completely free. All right, so stage two is this. The body is slowed down, okay? So the nervous system is starting to slow down, moving from the sympathetic nervous system, the go, 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 to the parasympathetic, where where rest, relaxation, and repair can take place. So important. You can't repair your body if you don't get into true parasympathetic nervous system overnight. All right, this is where your body temperature begins to drop. That's why, again, it's important to track your biometrics. So when you track your biometrics, you can actually make sure that your body temperature drops at least 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 degrees. So we're not talking about a major drop in body temperature. It's not like you drop from like 98.6 to 96 degrees for your core temperature. It's not like that. It's just you're dropping percentage points, uh, and that's enabling you, though, to get into more of that um, hibernation-based state. We'll call it that way. The eye movement begins to, to stop, to calm down. And your brain waves begin to slow. So that's really important as well. So like the activity of the brain begins to quiet. So that's stage two. Stage three and four is where the body begins to move into deeper sleep. So when we're looking at deep sleep, this is where your heart rate, heart, <laughs> that's your heart rate and breathing combined together really begin to become their slowest. So again, when I'm tracking my deep sleep at night, I can see a precipitous drop in my heart rate, typically like, well, typically anywhere between five and 10 beats, you know? So if I'm, if I'm, let's say that during the day, let's say I'm in the low 60s, I'll drop down to the low 50s. Now, some people drop down to the 40s. Again, that, that's a little bit based on your Ayurveda constitution, your body, levels of stress, all sorts of different things, right? It just, there's, there's so many variabilities, variables when it comes to heart rate, so I'm not going to get into that um, today, but your body's getting into a nice deep sound sleep, literally. And I won't go over all the benefits of deep sleep today, but that is where like full body repair is taking place. So a lot of people are like, oh, I get three hours of REM. It's good to have REM. I, too much REM is actually not a good thing. I'll talk about that on another show. That's for sure. Like over three hours, I would say not so good. Um, every once in a while, okay, no big deal. But uh, that can be a signal for something else. So actually, I'm trying to mental note that right now. Hopefully, my team will remind me. I'll do a show if you're getting too much REM sleep, especially if it's at the, if it's at the um, expense of deep sleep, because deep sleep is where you get the full body brain and body repair. REM sleep is more a refiling. But again, we'll talk about that on another show. So deep sleep also, I don't want, I don't want there to be any confusion around this too. Deep sleep is happening in the beginning of the night for the most part. Okay, so it's abnormal for you to get deep sleep the last two, three hours of your uh, sleep for the night. So let's give an example. 
If you go to bed by 10, which is what I recommend, again, I, I understand it's early for some people, I get it, but if you can get to bed before 10, your deep sleep is most likely happening somewhere between 10 and 2 a.m., okay? It's happening for those first four hours of the night maximum. That's typically it. Now, there's a case that it can be in other parts of the night, and that's true, and, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but that's where it's happening. So it's going to last anywhere from basically 40 minutes to 90 minutes, somewhere around there, 45 to 90 minutes. If you can get 90 minutes, phenomenal. And you might move in and out of it a little bit, just and that will be tracked just kind of based on heart rate and breath rate and body temperature and, and all those things. But um, that is where it's happening. So if you look at it, if you sleep from 10 to 6, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., well, the first half of the night is till 2 a.m. So that's where the predominance of your deep sleep is going to happen. That's why you can't miss out that first part of the night. You can't. So that's why alcohol, which keeps your heart rate higher and your body has to de detox it, eating too close to bed, like all of these things are detrimental to deep sleep. Too much stress right before bed, detrimental. Exercising right before bed, detrimental to deep sleep. Because your deep sleep is most likely happening if it's your body's functioning normally uh, that first half of the night. All right, so then we move into, after we've moved through some deep sleep, we're then moving into REM-based sleep. So REM sleep is stage five. So right before that, we'll call it uh, deep sleep, stage four. There's stage three and four. You're kind of moving in and out of that or towards finally getting into that deeper sleep. Stage five is REM-based sleep. So it's happening um, at least, so it's typically, I haven't seen it on too many clients and I've seen this on, on thousands. It's typically not happening for the first few hours of the night. You could dip in a little bit, but typically not. You're moving through the first four stages, then the latter half of the night. So past three or four hours already in bed, you're then moving into these deeper sleep stages, and especially REM. So REM is your rapid eye movement, right? So that's what REM stands for. So the eyes are moving back and forth. Your breathing can become faster. Your heart rate can actually elevate a little bit, um, even close to its wakeful base sleep. There's going to be more of a dream-based state. This is where I talk about like the refiling. So you take all of the thoughts from the day or what you're worried about in the future or what happened in the past. You're putting them into different filing cabinets, I call it, in your brain. Um, and, and this is uh, probably going to be a state where your body is very active, if you think about that. So if you think of deep sleep, no, not really, not very active, might be difficult to wake you. Uh, REM sleep, you're like, your body, your brain is actually moving. It's actually going pretty quick. And that's, and one of the reasons is it's, it's doing that even more so, especially if you're very stressed. So that's why we want to look at that too. Now, the great thing about um, REM sleep is that you're going to move in and out of it for that last half to two thirds of the night. So you're gonna move through sleep cycles. Sleep cycles for young infants are like 40 minutes, 45 minutes or so. Um, you might even see that with like babies waking. But for adults, it's about 90 minutes. So in a, in a sleep cycle, you're gonna kind of move from light sleep to maybe moderate, and then you're gonna move into REM sleep. And then from REM sleep, you'll come out of that, and then you'll come back down. It's kind of like a wave. And so you're actually able to accumulate more REM sleep as the night goes, all right? So really, really important. Both REM and deep sleep are obviously very, very crucial to your overall health. There isn't necessarily one that's better than the other. The ideal, again, is about two hours of REM, about an hour and a half of deep. You can get more, so it's not that you can't. It's fantastic if you can get two hours of deep sleep. Um, but I also wanted to just share with you one other thing, is that people always ask, how do I then end up getting a little bit more REM or a little bit deep sleep? And I don't actually recommend this. So I'm not, I'm not telling you to necessarily... Uh, wake yourself up at two, three, or four, um, because it might be difficult for you to go back to bed. But what I've seen myself is I've ever, if I've ever woken up at like 3 a.m. or so, and at that time, if I'm up just for a couple minutes and I fall back to sleep, it will kind of reset my sleep cycle. So I can actually get a little bit more deep sleep, which is, again, not normal for me, three, four o'clock in the morning, but I woke up. And so maybe for like 20, 30 minutes, I went back into deep sleep and then I moved in light and then I went to REM and sleep again. So it's very interesting to kind of look at, you know, what we might be able to do in the future. And I, I believe like 10, 20 years from now, we can actually, most likely we'll be able to, and, and I've got some, um, uh, 
uh, neurological devices sounds sounds kind of scary, but um, these devices that will actually send just small vibrations into the body. And I'm willing to bet, and I bet it's being worked on right now, that there's going to be a way to kind of trigger the parasympathetic nervous system to a greater degree. And I already know some of these devices, but I haven't seen them uh, actually trigger uh, states of sleep at night. But very, very interesting. Um, I use binaural beats and things like that to kind of calm the brain uh, before bed uh, for sure. Uh, blue light blockers, et cetera. But again, I talk about those in other shows. So um, I find sleep to be extremely interesting. Uh, really, it's one of the factors that's going to get you back your health. It's going to help transform your body. It's going to help transform uh, your longevity. And so if you're not already working on it, definitely recommend it. I'll link up previous shows today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2321. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, of course, do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or any practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.